Hello and good morning friends. Today I want to talk to you about how does a dry well work, especially for a septic system. You sometimes will also see them for groundwater management. Let's get into it. So a dry well, what is it? Where does the term come from? How is it built? What does it do? These are all great questions. You're at the right place though. We're going to take a step-by-step -step approach to go through how all of that stuff works and where you'll see them, right? So our focus on this channel is generally going to be about the world of well and septic, but there are some times that that world will cross and go into other categories as well, such as landscaping, right? So the term dry well is generally used when it comes to the absorption of a liquid, right? So in our area, the way that they're constructed or they used to be constructed, right? Big pit, right? Generally six to eight feet diameter, about eight to 10 feet deep. And then they're gonna put dry stack cinder block and stone on the exterior with a big fat lid on top, right? Now the middle would be a void. Now this was generally used in our area before 1982-ish, maybe 84, depending on where you go, right? That was how people would address the liquid for their septic system. So you'd have your tank that would catch the solids, and then you'd have the dry wells that would deal with the liquids. So where did that term come from? How do we come up with that term, right? Another term for them is seepage pits, which makes a little bit more sense. But the term dry well will generally come from the way that old drinking wells were constructed, right? So back in the day, they would hand dig the wells, and those wells, they would line with concrete, stone, cinder block, whatever other type of media they had to keep the hole from collapsing, right? But it also had to be permeable enough for the water from the ground to get in so that you could consume it, right? So with a dry well, same concept, except for in the name, it's a dry well, meaning water is not coming into it except for going out. The only water that goes in is gonna come from the septic tank. So why? did that work so a cinder block inherently is porous right so in our area they would dry stack those blocks so there would be no mortar in the middle or in the seams and so as the water would go in it would work its way through those seams sometimes the blocks would be turned sideways that's a little bit more old school in our area closer to like 1950s ish 1940s depending those were generally cesspool conversions but whole different topic for a whole different day right so you've got your cinder blocks set up there's no mortar in between. And so the water will go through those joints and through the cinder block itself. And on the outside of that, they're gonna have stone. And the stone is just there to open up the soil to let the water go out. And as you put water in, the water should dissipate into the surrounding soil. The surrounding soil is your filtering media that's actually gonna clean up the water, let it go back into the environment and do its, its water thing, right? So that was the old way of doing it. Nowadays, we don't really use dry wells too much because they're very labor intensive. It's a lot easier to just dig a trench, dig a straight line, backfill it with stone. Same concept, drain fields do the exact same things, just slightly different uh, practice to put it together, right? But some counties, you'll still see them, right? So in Anne Arundel County or some of our Southern and Eastern counties, you will still see the board dry wells where they'll dig down, but they are gonna fill it with stone. They're not gonna leave an open void. The reason that we don't leave the open void is let's just say you drive a tractor, you go over top, in you go, right? Same thing with if you have a large truck, a crane, or any other kind of large piece of equipment, you can go through the lid. So if you have an open void, guess what? You're in the you're in the pit now too, right? So most of the modern construction met met methods for this are going to dig the hole, but then they're going to backfill it with stone and have a perforated pipe going up and down. So that is still used, but very, very sparsely. You don't see it very often in Maryland. Most of the time, most of our conventional systems are going to be drain fields. If you can't support a drain field or you don't have the space for a drain field, usually you'll get into an innovative system, but drywall still exists. So you might be wondering, how, how do they connect to landscaping? Well, when you have downspouts, you gotta get that water to go somewhere, right? And you can't just always just discharge it into the neighbor's yard. They might get a little upset. So what some counties are doing is they're now actually having new construction homes build the uh, dry wells essentially for the downspouts. So as the rainwater hits your roof, it'll go down the gutter and then it'll go into a solid pipe into a pit. Those pits are built basically the same exact way as sewage, sewage pits. It's just instead of sewage water, now you're dealing with rainwater. And they also fail in the same way, right? So the debris and all the particulates that are on your roof, maybe the moss, maybe the asphalt shingles, all that little stuff's gonna get into the pit and then it'll start to plug up the soil or it'll oversaturate it, right? 
That's why a lot of times on newer homes, you're gonna see a few of those pits throughout the house. You might see one up front, two in the back. Depends on how big the roof is, depends on how big the house is. Like most of the modern construction in our area generally ends up being closer to 700 to above thousand dollars per unit. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. So most of those homes are fairly large homes. So they generally will need about four, one for each of the corners of the property, right? So those pipes are gonna have the same observation stand as you'd see for septic, except for it's for the downspouts. The rules are a little bit different. So like you're not as like bound by like the distance and setbacks for like a potable drinking well as you would be for a sewage uh, water. Yeah, kind of makes sense, right? You don't want to have your drinking well next to your poo. Otherwise you're going to run into some problems, but you can also have your downspouts discharge into the pits that are close-ish to the um, to the well. Every local county health department has a different set of rules and setbacks. So if you ever have a question about your setback, you got to make sure you look at your specific health department. At least in our area, all of them will have a list that'll say X amount of feet from the house, X amount of feet from a deck, X amount of feet from a fence, property line, street, utilities, X, Y, Z, whatever it is, there's going to be a list somewhere to tell you what you got to do. All right. So generally you're not going to see a dry well very often. But when you do, usually it's an older system. The way that I usually advise that you can kind of see it at a distance is if the pipe is five inches or bigger, usually it's an older system. If it's four inches, almost always it's going to be a newer thing, right? Newer system. The other thing to look for is the pipe material. So a newer system will be using Schedule 40 PVC. An older system would either be using terracotta or cast iron. So it'll look completely different from how the newer stuff looks. Generally in our area, if you have a septic tank, you're gonna have the tank with either the clean out or the riser, maybe neither. But if you have a tank with a clean out, the odds of you having a clean out on the pit are pretty high. So you'll usually see one stacked after the other, or you'll see one and then at a 45, the other, 45, the other, and they'll kind of straddle the tank. With a board dry well or any of the modern installations of a dry well, generally uh, it could be anywhere right so it just depends on how deep they have to go and if you start seeing miscellaneous four inch pipes in your yard you kind of want to open them up see what you look for right so if you have a septic tank going to it just run the water in the house if you see water getting to it well, there you go now you know i hope that this was helpful right you don't come across dry wells very often but they do exist and i do see people ask about that every now and again I hope this was useful. If there's any area of conversation or topic you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment below, right? I have more videos posted on the World Well and Septic every single day, and I'm here to try and help you all grow and learn, and I'm trying to help myself grow and learn by having these conversations. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Till next time, guys.